When creating digital output, such as web graphics or social media banners, we often work in pixels, the tiny squares that combine to form the overall image. In this video, we'll look at the Pixel Perfect workflow in Corel Draw and go over some of the new pixel tools and features in Corel Draw 2019. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial to try out the steps yourself. I'll choose File, New, and look for Web under Presets. For page size, I'll choose the Medium Rectangle Add, which measures 300 by 250 pixels. In my Snap To dropdown, I want to make sure that Pixels is checked. Generally, when working with the pixel grid, it's best to keep only pixel snapping on and turn off all other snaps. As I start to zoom in on the lower left corner of the page, the pixel grid starts to appear. I can see that one complete pixel aligns exactly with this corner. In previous versions, pixels were centered on the page, which sometimes resulted in partial pixels along the edges. Because this page size is set in complete pixels, each corner has one pixel grid square. The pixel grid appearance is set in the Document Options window on the Grid tab. This is where I could adjust the grid opacity or change its color. As a basic pixel example, I'll activate the Rectangle tool, which is the tool I would start with to create a button in a web banner. I'll click a swatch to set a fill color and right-click for the outline color. My outline width is 2 pixels. When you set these object properties, you may see a pop-up asking you to confirm a change to the default properties. Just click OK. When I'm zoomed in, I can see the pixel snap at grid corners. But even when zoomed out, while I can't see the pixel grid, the rectangle I create will still snap to the grid, as I can see by zooming back in. Because the rectangle outlines have an even number of pixels, when I use the Pick tool to move this rectangle, the rectangle nodes align with pixel grid corners, with these corners centered within the outline. This applies to resizing as well. Alignment is always relative to grid corners. If I change the outline width to 4 pixels, or 6, the alignment will remain consistent with grid corners. Now say I change the outline width to an odd number, 3 pixels. The outline now has two correctly filled pixels and two partially filled pixels. But aligning this rectangle to the pixel grid is now an easy fix. I can right-click on the rectangle and choose Align with Pixel Grid. Now the outline is pixel perfect, this time aligned with grid center points so that the outline will remain centered within its three pixel border. As I move or resize this rectangle, each corner always aligns to a grid center, and this would be the case for any odd number of outline pixels. An outline of none, or zero pixels, is treated as an even number pixel outline. When I align to the pixel grid, the rectangle goes back to aligning to grid corners. If I switch to hairline outline, this is treated as a one pixel outline, and aligning to the pixel grid switches to grid centers. This pixel alignment applies to curves as well. I'll activate the pen tool, which still has the two pixel outline. Each click aligns to a grid corner even when I'm zoomed out too far to see it. Though if I had started with an odd number of pixels, each click would have aligned to a grid center. The Shape tool displays the curve nodes, each of which is on a grid corner. Editing this curve while in the Shape tool also keeps nodes on grid corners. I'll select the curve and change the outline width to an odd number. The Align and Distribute docker is another place where I can find the Align with Pixel Grid option. After clicking this button, each node aligns to a grid square center, actually changing the curve geometry just a bit. If I move the curve, and the nodes become out of alignment, I can simply align again. Now let's compare drawing from scratch, with the pixel snap on and off. I'll turn off the snap, and activate the Common Shapes tool. I'll choose one of the arrows, and drag to create it, keeping the Control key pressed to maintain the aspect ratio. The outline width is still 2 pixels, and the overall arrow size contains pixel fractions, since no snapping was used. I'll press Ctrl Q to convert the arrow to curves. With the Shape tool, I can see that the nodes don't align to the pixel grid. When I choose to align the arrow to the grid, the nodes sit on grid corners, 
and the dimensions in pixels are nice clean numbers. If I change the outline width to an odd number, I'll have to align again to grid centers. Turning the pixel snap back on, I'll create the same shape. The dimensions in pixels now contain no decimals, and the nodes are aligned to grid corners. Now I'll select and erase everything on this page so far, and I'll import an image I've already created. This logo looks pretty nice at a large size, but if I shrink it down to fit the web add page, the pixelation shows more strongly. I can fix this with one click by aligning the image to the pixel grid. Now the edges of the text are sharper, and I can zoom in to see the clean pixel grid. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on working with pixels. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, please follow the link in the description below, which will take you to this tutorial page in Corel's Discovery Center. Here you'll find a written version of this tutorial to download and follow along.